Keeping cash flowing through a business, especially in the early stages, is one of the most important things that you need to get right. We are entering 2020. Physical cash is dead. Everyone expects to pay by credit or debit card these days. So today, I'm gonna to give you a full guided tour of the little iZettle credit card reader. I've been using one for about three years now and it genuinely transformed how I do business. Hiya folks, welcome back to the Small Business Toolbox. I'm Andy Mack and I've been self-employed for like ever. As I say, in today's video, I'm gonna give you a full guided tour of the little iZettle credit card reader. I've still got the ancient version one version of this. The version two version is now out, which has the green little flappy bit on. So quite a lot to cover off in this video. I'm gonna tell you how to set up the iZettle machine, how to get it all linked up to your mobile phone, how to configure everything, how to set up your receipts so that they look nice for customers, how to add products, how to use barcodes if you want to scan barcodes on products from your mobile phone. I'm gonna to briefly touch on how to take cash payments via iZettle and how to take tips, how to issue payment links to customers so that they can pay you when you're not even there. I'll show you an example of how to take a contactless payment and a chip and pin payment, how to issue a receipt to a customer and how to issue a refund. The costs for your business to take credit cards are really straightforward. Basically, iZettle charge up 1.75% fee. You've then just got the cost of the actual card reader itself, which I'll tell you about in a minute. There's no monthly fees or anything like that. And you can take all major credit cards, including Amex, Apple Pay, and Google Pay. This video is not sponsored by iZettle. iZettle aren't paying me anything to make this video. I bought the little card reader myself. As I say, it's quite old now. I've had it for several years. I am an iZettle affiliate, so if you could do me a massive favor and use the link in the description and it just helps me to make more videos like this. And as an extra bonus for you guys, the normal price of one of these readers is about 59 pound plus VAT, I think, which is a bargain anyway. But at the moment, if you use the link in the description, you'll get it for 19 pounds plus VAT for the card reader, which is unbelievably cheap. I don't know how long iZettle will keep that offer going for. As you may have heard, iZettle is now owned by PayPal, so I would suggest you grab it at that price while you can. And of course, it helps me to make more independent videos like this. It's really straightforward how it all works. You basically just install the iZettle app onto your mobile phone and it speaks to the little card reader via Bluetooth. So I've obviously already got my card reader, so I don't need to go through the application process again. I've set up an account on iZettle already, so let's get this all configured and ready to rock. So all I've done, I've gone to iZettle.com. I'm gonna go to login. I've typed in my email address, pop the password in and log in. So you can see it straight away brought us to this kind of get started wizard thing. So I'll take you through the wizard. It's easy to set it up without using the, the wizard, but we'll use that. So we'll do get started. I don't want to learn any more about iZettle e-commerce. So we'll skip that. I've already got a card reader. So we'll skip that. Tell us where to send your money. So this is an important bit. We'll do add bank account. Usual sort of thing. Just type in your UK bank account details in here. So we got up to uh, the bank account bit. The next bit was to download the app. So you should go on to your mobile phone and download the iZettle app. If you just search for iZettle, you should find it, no problem. And there's links here as well. And then it says take your first card payment. Before we do that, we're gonna set this up a bit. So we'll just go into the top little menu on the right hand corner there, and we'll go to settings. The first thing that I'm gonna do is just add a logo in here. So I'm just gonna do change. And I would suggest having a square or round logo with a transparent background or something like that. So I'm using a, a round one which is 500 pixels square, and that should do the job. And you can see here, we can just kind of adjust the crop and whatnot, so that should do like that. If we scroll down a little bit, we've got the VAT settings here. I'm just gonna put that to zero because I don't charge VAT. We're not gonna put a VAT number in. 
So I'll just do save. This is quite handy here. You can set a minimum account balance and it just means if you have to do any refunds or anything that there's going to be a little bit of money on the account in case you need to do a refund. For the sort of work that I do, I don't generally issue refunds, so I'm going to leave it on no. Collecting customer data, I would personally advise that you leave that as no. Um, you would have to activate it separately. It introduces a whole load of privacy things that you're going to have to take into account. The easier thing to do is just not collect customer data through iZettle unless you really have to, but if you wanted to, this is where you would activate it. And finally, scheduled deposits, and I always have that on daily. We'll just pop over now to receipt information. So all I've done, I've deleted all of the default information out of there, and I'm just going to show you for a, a made-up business. Let's call it Clever Cakes. Ten Cake Street. And then, of course, you can pop more information at the bottom here. So, for example, if you had, like, a sale on or something like that, you could pop that onto your receipt. So we'll put... 50% off until January 2020. And you can see that's appeared at the bottom of the receipt there. You can put maybe a link to your own terms and conditions or whatever you want. So I'm just going to do save. So that's the kind of receipt that you would get if you've got the till printer. And if we just click on email there, here's the kind of email receipt that the customer would get. And it's pretty straightforward. You can see we've got some weird thing where it's split the phone number up. Let's just take these spaces out and see if we can fix that. So you can just tweak it to make it look nice, you know. So do save. And the nice thing is you can change this at any time. This is a sole trader account that I've got here. It's not a limited company account. If it was a limited company account, the limited company registration number is embedded on the receipt and there's nothing that you can do about that. Uh, you would have to contact support, it tells you at the bottom there. But for a sole trader account, you don't really need to worry about that quite as much. We've done the bank details, but if you ever do want to change bank accounts that your money goes into, you just change it here, dead straightforward. Applications, this is where if you're integrating it with things like Zero Accounting or QuickBooks, then this is where you would do that. I'm not going to bother with that. We'll just have a quick look at invoice settings. So if you do want to use iZettle for invoicing, then this is where you would do it. Just bear in mind, obviously, they're going to take a slightly higher fee for invoice transactions than normal face-to-face -face credit card transactions. So it's up to you whether or not you want to do that. I'll just quickly take you through a couple of the other options in the main menu at the top right here. So if you're just going to then My Staff, if you've got members of staff and you want each of them to be shown on the receipt. For example, maybe if you're in a restaurant or something and you want the waiter or waitress details to be shown on the receipt, then this is where you can do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just do it as if I'm the only person working for the business. But if you do want to have multiple users, this is where you do that from. We've already looked at settings and got everything set up. If you need to order a new card reader, you do it from here. If you need to order accessories, you do it from here. So, for example, we've got the iZettle mini store kit here with like the kind of an EPOS system. And then if you scroll down, we've got the full store configuration with till and, and everything there. So seems pretty straightforward, to be honest. I haven't used any of that. I purely have the handheld reader and I issue receipts either by text or by email. So before we leave this, I'll just show you these remaining options across the top here. We've been kind of on the overview tab. If you go to the sales tab at the top here, this is where you would get a full list of all your transactions that have had over a period of time. So if you want to get all your transactions out and export them into Excel or whatever, then this is how you do it. Really straightforward. You can get receipts, account statements, uh, invoice copies, basically everything to do with historic sales is all in there. We've got the reports tab. And really, this is just a prettier view of the sales tab. It just gives you a bit more information about how your business is performing over a period of time, and it graphs it out and things like that, which is nice. I'll come back to products. Funding is a thing where if you want to basically borrow money off iZettle to grow your business and things, you can, you can do that. I'm not going to go into that on this. E-commerce is basically if you want to set up your own online shop. You can see here how much that costs. It costs £29 a month and I think 2% 
2.5% for card payments and 2% for PayPal. So again, if you want to keep everything in one place, then that could be a good route for you. But if you want a bit more control over how things are configured, then I would suggest going down the route of a separate online shop such as Shopify or WooCommerce or something like that. So the only other thing that's quite handy to know about is products. So if you click on products, what you can do is you can create your own pre-populated product library. So you just do add product. You can add a picture here. I'm, I'll add one of the Gothith Handyman tape measures just to show you how it's done. You can do inventory tracking on here if you want. So it tracks stock and all that sort of thing. I'm not gonna bother with that. I'm going to leave it on price per unit if you wanted to have custom units, for example, a price per pound or per mile or per hour, then that's where you would do it from. I'm just going to keep it on a fixed price. Uh, this is £12.50. You can put barcode details into here if you've got a barcode reader. And then you can add product variants as well. You can change your VAT rate and whatnot. And that's it. Save. Done. We have our first product. Let's add one more product. Add product, we'll add some pencils. Can't remember how much I charge for them. Let's just put three pounds and save. So that's pretty much everything done. You don't have to use products, but it's an option there if you want kind of predefined things with pictures and descriptions and prices. If you just go and sell on a fixed cost per job basis to a customer, like if you're a plumber or electrician or whatever, you don't need to bother with products. But if you've got the same thing that you keep selling over and over again for the same price, then this can save you a lot of time. So that's all done on the website of things. We'll head over to the app now and I'll show you how things look in the app itself. So I've installed the iZettle Go app on my phone. We'll just launch that. We're gonna log in with the account that we've already created. So I'm just gonna type my main account username and password in here. And it might take you straight to like a wizard thing in here. You can just dismiss that. And once you've done that, it should just default to like this product section here if it hasn't. You've got this little drop down at the top here. We've got search products and amount. As I say, if you're like an electrician or a plumber and you just wanna charge a fixed price for the job, the easiest thing to do is just go on to amount and you type the amount you want to bill in there. We'll, I'll show you an example in a minute. It's really straightforward, but I'm gonna show you some slightly niftier things that you can do from within the app. So first of all, I'll go onto the product thing and I'll show you how barcodes work first of all. All you do, you click this little pencil here to edit the product. So let's do the pencils first. And we go to the barcode option here. And when we click on that, you see you've got this little icon over the right here, this little barcode scanner. So I've got one of my pencils here with the barcode ready on it. Just gonna click on that. There we go, it's got it. Just double check it's got the barcode correct. Click the little box at the top there to save it. I'll do the same for the tape measure. So I've got the barcode on the tape measure there. Edit the product, click on the little barcode scanner, show it the barcode, done, tick. So those products are now set up with barcodes. I'll just click the tick there. So now if I want to sell those products to someone just by scanning the barcode, all you do is click the little barcode scanner icon at the top right, show it the product, and it's added it straight into the basket. We'll do the same for the tape measure just to show you. And there you go, it's added it straight into the basket. You can see the basket there, we've got one set of pencils, one tape measure. So at this point, I would just click the charge button and then that would hook up to the reader and do all of that, which I'll show you in a minute. If you've accidentally scanned something or added something that you don't want the customer to have, you just go up to here and you can delete them out using the little delete key there that empties the basket. If you don't want to use the barcode feature, all you do is click on the product and you know, if you've only got a small number of products, it's probably much quicker not to use the barcode facility. You can see how quick that is just to add 
bunch of products in have a look at the basket there you can see we've got four pencils four tape measures but if you've got a lot of different products and especially if you've got staff who might get confused as to what a particular product is then you might want to go down the barcode route but if it's just yourself and you've got a small number of products it's much easier just to add it like that you can see how quick that is again get rid of them you can edit them individually from here and change the quantities if you want or delete them completely so you just click on the item and delete or you empty the whole basket just by clicking the little thing at the top there if you are going down the route of just billing the customer for an amount rather than for a product what I generally do is I add in a description for example the customer's address type in the amount and then just hit the charge button and then that would hook it up to the card reader now I haven't got a card reader connected yet I will show you that in a second we'll just come back to that again that's automatically gone into the basket if you have a failure for some reason like it hasn't connected up to your machine be careful you don't accidentally charge the customer twice you can see we've already got something in the basket here we've got that order that we've just created so watch that you don't accidentally create it again it's already in the basket you don't need to create it again but for fixed amounts that's all that I do if you're selling products you do it from there if you want to search for a product you do it from there it's pretty straightforward a couple of extra options you've got in the menu here if you go down to settings we've got the option to take cash payments so if you want to issue a formal receipt via iZettle but you want to take a cash payment then you can switch cash payments on there if you always want to print a receipt for example if you've got a receipt printer of some description then you would switch that on there and this is also where you would configure hooking up a cash drawer and receipt printer and things as well the only other thing you might want to think about is if you've got a business that accepts tips if you go into card here then you can switch the tip option on and then it'll ask the customer if they want to add a tip onto the order not really appropriate for the sort of stuff that I do so I'm going to leave that switched off you can also make use of a facility known as payment links and this is where you send a link so that the customer can pay online so for example the customer doesn't have their card with them or something like that and you want to give them the option to pay via iZettle but via an online link well this is where you would activate that and you just click the activate thing there and then you can send them a payment link they pay online and it automatically cross references back to your iZettle account and then you've also got access to all the usual kind of reporting stuff receipts reports invoices and whatnot from here as well so if you want to invoice a customer you can invoice the customer from here let's take a payment and I'll show you how that works so I've just got the old version 1 card reader here the version 2 one's very similar I think this has got like the option where you can swipe a card with a mag strip card which um, the newer version doesn't have that but we've got contactless and chip and pin on this so that's pretty much everything that you need I'm just going to switch the card reader on and then within the app I'm just going to go to settings and card reader this is the original uh, version 1 one if you've got a brand new one it'll probably be the version 2 card reader I'm just going to do that power on your reader which I've already done next to put it into pairing mode you need to press and hold the blue tick for five seconds I'm already in pairing mode so I don't need to do that just do next just click on your card reader there it'll come up with the confirmation code you don't want to allow access to your call history and all that sort of thing so just leave it as is click pair on your phone click the blue tick on the card reader and that's it done so we're now ready to accept a payment remember you only have to do that once the first ever time that you connected up you'll never have to do that again so we're just going to head into take payments if you were doing the product thing all you would do is just add your products to the basket from there and you would do charge and then when you do charge it'll automatically come up on here and it says tap or insert card we're not going to do that I'm just going to go back here payment cancelled it's telling us I need to charge up the card reader that's no surprise I'm just going to empty everything out the basket here and we're going to do a manual payment of like 10 pence or something so we'll do amount 
see if we can do I don't know if that it'll let you do one for such a low amount but I'm gonna try that I'm just gonna add a description in here as I say I would normally put like the customer's address or something like that in the description just so that when you cross-reference back later on you've got some record of who the customer was but for this I'm just gonna put test transaction and hit the charge button because it's lower than 30 pounds I can just do contactless on this uh, amount too low so the lowest I can do is one pound charge one pounds always check that the amounts correct on the screen as I say don't accidentally charge a customer twice or whatever done and now we've got the option to do a receipt either to print a receipt if you've got a receipt printer or normally what I would do is an email receipt or you can do a text message receipt as well so I'll do an email receipt to see and see what it looks like and that's it done if we now go into the little settings at the top here and go to the receipts we'll see the transaction that we've just done if you want to do a refund this is where you would do the refund from if you go into reports we should now see that we've got a payment made and you can see all the reports of by day or by month or whatever and that is it simple as that exactly the same process if you're doing it by product you would literally just go into there add your products too high a value for contactless payment here so you would have to do chip and pin I would just pop the card in the bottom hand the card reader to the customer get them to type the pin number in if you've got halfway through charging someone and you realize that you've charged them the wrong amount or whatever just on the actual app just go into the little back arrow there and that basically cancels the tra transaction remember you've probably still got it in your basket so you can either recharge them straight from the basket like that or you can go in and obviously edit the basket from here maybe it was four tape measures click the little tick and now do the charge again again chip and pin on this hand the customer the card reader let them do the do issue a receipt if you want to issue a receipt and that's it done i generally leave my card reader switched off when i'm not using it just to save the battery and if you're only using it maybe once or twice a day you'll get weeks and weeks out of the battery if you switch it off when you're not using it to switch it off just hold your finger on the power button for a few seconds till it beeps and that's it and by the way here's the receipt that the customer would receive so you can see here we've got clever cakes receipt from clever cakes for one pounds and if we click on that and you can see it looks really professional we've got like the little 50% uh, off thing that we added on on there and uh, all the address details and it even includes a little map so the customer knows exactly where the payment was taken from which I think is a really nice security feature that they've added on there so that's all there is to it I've found the money hits your bank account in about two to three days remember there's no rental fees or anything like that IZ will just charge the at the moment 1.75 percent and of course if you do me a massive favor and click the link in the description then you'll get the reader for the 19 pound plus fat at the moment obviously you need an internet connection from your mobile phone for this to all work but this day and age that is pretty commonplace I've only ever had one situation where for some reason I just couldn't get a 4G signal from my phone and I ended up just asking the customer whether I could temporarily borrow their Wi-Fi which they let me do and I could do the transaction that way it's pretty rare these days that you don't have an internet connection so to me that's really not been an issue in the entire time that I've used it you don't need to be a credit provider let the credit card companies do that for you I've found customers love the fact that they can pay on credit card it means that they can kind of manage the payment terms without having to involve you in the whole process you don't need to be an extended line of credit anymore and this is fantastic because it gets cash flowing around your business faster if you've got any questions about how it all works feel free to pop it down in the comments below if you're new to the channel don't forget to hit subscribe this channel is all about independent tips and reviews and advice for small businesses in the uk best of luck on your small business journey and i shall see you next time take care bye